usual setting, as you can see. Uh, service station video for us. We were kicked out of the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But fingers crossed it'll be well worth the wait for you guys as we do a little bit of deep diving into the, the issues, what went wrong, and, and a little bit into the future as to how Newcastle can move forward from what has largely been a challenging uh, week is Eddie Howe and his players have found out. Um, Don, because me and Jordan did a little bit of a live earlier, let's have your take on, on what you witnessed and some of your opinions from what you've seen down in North London. Yeah, I can't imagine my opinion will differ too greatly from you guys. 4-1 defeat almost says it all, really. Newcastle lacking at both ends of the pitch. The chances that could have quite easily scored more than the one goal they did eventually score late on through Joe Linton. Spurs, I think every time they went forward, particularly in the second half, they looked like scoring, tacking down that uh, left-hand side with Song Hill Min, and then Richarlison, his movement, just Fabian Schoen, Jamal Lascelles got nowhere near him all afternoon, and Tino Livermento had an uncharacteristically poor performance dealing with uh, Pedro Porro and Dejan Kulusevski as well. So. Yeah, poor, poor performances across the park. Bit of credit for Joe Linton with his goal and I thought he was probably the one player, I think you said Liam, of trying to actually make things happen and do things. Um, but yeah, Newcastle, it's, it's, you can't be too critical at the same time, looking at things on a bigger scale when you take a step back, but taking the games just objectively as an individual game, these last two have been really really quite poor um, over over the 90 or so minutes they've played and it, it's something that has been coming it, it's felt it's felt the injury situation the wheels were always bound to come off at some point and it, it Newcastle were exceeding expectations for me by beating Chelsea so convincingly by drawing should have beat uh, Paris Saint-Germain and beaten Manchester United. They've out, outplayed the, those teams massively as well, well outplayed Chelsea and Manchester United in particular and it's just that game too far, those two games too far in this case where the mental fatigue, the physical fatigue to a degree as well has just taken its toll on this squad and naming the same outfield 10 players for the fifth time in 14 days was always going to be difficult. You can't take maximum points from that and the fact they've taken two wins from two decent sides in Chelsea and Manchester United is, is credit to Eddie Howe and his team but today yeah, the, the shortcomings of, of the squad if you like and the caveat of the injury situation sort of just came to the fore as they did to a probably a lesser extent at Everton on on Thursday night where they were in the game without much quality and then it just collapsed through individual errors today. Today, uh, sorry, on Thursday, today it was just, or yesterday as we're filming this, one o'clock in the morning uh, at Weatherby Services. Um, <laughs> been a long day. Uh, to, yesterday it just came to a fore and Newcastle were well off it as, as a team rather than individual mistakes. It was just all around, I thought. Yeah, I think it's kind of what we've said on <clears throat> recent videos. I would say that it's always felt. I think I think I might have said it a couple of weeks ago. Might have even been the Arsenal game. Might, I can't remember when it was, but going over the previous videos, how how often could this team keep going to the well and producing and, and just coming back and bringing more and more as, as people pass by here? All right, he's a happy lad. He's happier than Newcastle if fans try and I hoot have I crook to get back from from London after what's been. By all accounts, travel chaos um, on the trains. Where was I going with that? Yeah, I think I think it's always felt like it was built on sand, largely. The quality's there. The foundations, it feels of a good season are kind of there. That they've progressed. That they're on the fringes in, in the Premier League, as well as being at a point where this midweek they can progress in the Champions League. They've um, gone on a really tough run and got themselves to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, but. It just feels it feels like how often can they keep calling upon the same players? Mm. I want to ask you, Jordan. Do you think do you think some of that falls on Eddie Howe? Is could he have could he have used the squad a little bit more in the last few games? Because I'm only looking at what I see on social media, and this is my opinion at all. But I think it's only fair we address these things. And people have said this to, to my co my comments on there. They said it to yours, potentially yours as well, Dom. Yeah. 
people come on and say Eddie isn't using the bench, don't care who it is, could he not be using the players? He's got some senior players on that bench, could he not be using them more in this period? I mean, it's just a, it's just a limited bench, isn't it? I mean, the two players that return today are Sean Longstaff, Callum Wilson, massive boost, significantly improved that bench straight away. But you take them two players off it and you look at the bench they've had a field over the last few games. Was it 321's players, Alex Murphy, Amadou Diallo, Ben Parkinson. You then got the likes of Matt Ritchie's, Emil Kraft, Paul Dummett's. They're not exactly going to make a difference in the, in the top end of the pitch. Other. But having said that, because they've had so many games, it almost felt like Eddie Howe at some point had to make some kind of change. And I thought against Tottenham, he probably would have. I thought I expected changes to start 11. Obviously, couldn't make many, but I did expect a few players to, to come in and just freshen things up from uh, from Wednesday, uh, from Thursday when they did ultimately look very leggy, uh, mentally fatigued, and parts physically fatigued. Um, but yeah, an unchanged outfield 11, or outfield players for the fifth match in a row. It's taken, it, it, it's taken its toll. Um, yeah, I mean, that bench. It, it's difficult. It's it's difficult to see. Aren't I understand the the purpose of of wanting to freshen things up, and I, and I agree with that to, to some extent. Um, but I think Eddie Howe has touched upon it himself. He said he doesn't want to make changes for the for the sake of it, and I think ultimately Eddie Howe looks at his bench and doesn't feel like he's got the options to do that. And that goes back to the to the question: Does Eddie Howe have trust in his uh, in the players that were available on the bench, and does he have does he trust them to make an impact? And you look at the options he had. He probably didn't. The, un the only one I do understand, which fans have questioned a lot, is, is Lewis Hall, the player you brought in from, from Chelsea, is expected to sign for this uh, club next summer for £28 million. A lot of money for an uh, 18, 19 year old. And yeah, he's quite st well, strangely been overlooked. Um, could you have played Lewis Hall? And, and, uh, you know these games, obviously, apart from the Chelsea game, but they've had four games apart from that. And, and Lewis Hall hasn't got a hasn't got a look. And he's actually the first time he was brought off the and first time he made an appearance was against Tottenham, and that was the first time he'd appeared since Bournemouth, I think. Um, yeah. Which I do, I, I do, I, I do find it do find it quite strange. But I think in itself, I think that's probably quite telling on Lewis Hall the fact that Eddie Howe probably doesn't think he's he's ready and um, so he's looked at the squad he's got limited options and I think he's almost just picked the squad because he feel like he's he feel like feel like he's got no one else yeah I agree and the, the Lewis Hall thing it, it does come from him being a summer signing I think based on his performances Eddie Howe sort of suggested when Lewis Hall gets on the pitch he has to perform he hasn't got on the pitch a lot but other than the Manchester United game you'd probably go he hasn't performed to the levels of someone like Tino Livermento who is in that position at the ta at this moment in time. So if you're looking who's Newcastle's strongest fit left back, it's not Lewis Hall, it's Tino Livermento. And then Kieran Trippier is, okay, he's not available for the next Premier League game, but he's the avail available right back who will play week in, week out because he is, he's Kieran Trippier, he's, he's got that quality. But yeah, I think the, we've seen the injury situation take its toll because it is, it is particularly bad, but I feel like the way Newcastle play doesn't lend itself particularly well to having a lack of options, a lack of players on the bench, because it is intensity, it is running, it is high energy, and to ask 10 players to do the same thing uh, five times in two weeks is, is an awful lot, I think. And we've spoke in the car, Eddie Howe as a manager, not to criticise him, too much because what he's achieved at Newcastle has been incredible but what he's achieved the foundations of that have been through hard work um, outworking opponents out battling opponents not necessarily outwitting opponents and out thinking and it, it's just Newcastle have such a clear style and almost a strict style to a degree that the sort this the can't really change out of that and I think the injury situation is a sort of um, compiled that and made made it the um, play style exposed slightly because they haven't had the players to continually produce those levels in the, over a, a consistent period, basically, the last two games. Anyway. I think 
I think in these situations, I think it's only uh, fair that you that everybody almost looks at it with a hypercritical eye. I think it's it's very obvious as to why Newcastle you find themselves in the situation that they are. I think it's the unprecedented level of injuries um, in key positions to key players. Um, that's when the drop off has come. Uh, after a really tough run of games, Manchester United, Chelsea, uh, PSG, it's almost been after the Lord Mayor show when they've got through what looked to be the most challenging to then drop off at Everton and then I think Spurs was always going to be tough because they're an excellent side this season um, transformed in many ways. But I think you've got to look at it with a hypercritical eye and I think, so I've looked at a lot of the benches over the last few weeks and it sort of brings into question the balance of the squad and I think there were risks taken in the summer which look at one hindsight's a wonderful thing wouldn't we all wish we had hindsight in every uh, way of life to, to change decision look back and you know have that foresight to have not made the wrong decisions I'm not saying they did make wrong decisions but the balance of the squad is obvious it was too heavily weighted towards defenders um, not enough options in the attacking third of course it would be the attacking third where you got lots of injuries and have le it's left them with major problems whereby for many games this season they've only had three available forward players unless you go down to some kids who've ended up getting minutes who are nowhere near ready we talk about Lewis Hall potentially in my opinion not really looking ready to be a Premier League starter I think there's people who've got minutes from the bench this season under Eddie Howe that are even a million miles away from where Lewis Hall finds himself and that kind of shows how stretched they've been in those forward areas Look, I think they'll look to address that in the windows coming moving forward. Um, but the here and now is, it's a defining month. It's a defining month um, for the season, largely. It is possible that if the run continues, you could find yourself dropping off massively in the league uh, and out of all three cup competitions, because the games aren't easy. But let's not be too negative about it. But like I said, although there are... It's, it's a good foundation of where they are in the season. They're in the mix in the Premier League. They're not a million miles away from where they want to be. They're in a quarter, quarter final of a cup and potentially into a last 16. Or it's in their own hands to continue in Europe um, if they're going to beat AC Milan on Wednesday night. Now, I've said we've written them off many times before, well, at times in the past, even privately, when you sort of turn up the faces and think, oh, I'm not sure they'll get something here today and they've went and done it. So I wouldn't bet against this team on any given day going and getting a result. But they find it tough at the minute. Um, against some tough teams, I mean, realistically in the last sort of four days, they probably played Tottenham team who were, who have been one of the best teams. We've got players back today, uh, sorry, yesterday, whenever you watch this. We've got players back this weekend and have probably been one of the standout teams of the, of the division so far. And then they played Everton, who are undoubtedly one of the most informed teams in the Premier League, despite their lowly position. Um, I think I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, they've won nine of the last 13 games, which is incredible. Um, if that's true, I might have just read that from somewhere. <laughs> well, another one thing that was true is if they hadn't had that 10 points deduction, they would only be three points off. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of makes sense, and doesn't it? The kind of form that they're in after a really sticky start of the season. Um, so it it's, was never going to be an easy place to go and 10 minutes of madness probably cost them. So look, I think there's still a lot to be positive about. I think it's okay to be upset by what was witnessed, I think particularly in that second half. We touched upon it in the live. For me, 0-45. Tottenham were very good, they were at home. They created a lot of chances, but Newcastle had the odd chance. And in a clinical Newcastle probably takes at least one of those, keeps them in the game. Uh, second half, I thought it was a big drop off for the second half. I don't think Tottenham had to perform very well to counter to a victory in that second half. I think Newcastle United defensively allowed them to do that. And that's probably the most disappointing part. Newcastle have gone from one of the most resolute uh, back fours and uh, team units, hard to beat, difficult again, uh, home or away to score goals against, to a team who have shipped a lot of goals recently. And unfortunately, because of the lack of options, the goals dried up a little bit at the other end too. Um, but yeah. I'm not even sure where we go. How do we throw this forward, lads? Because yeah, we've got to be thinking about. I mean, you guys are going to be at the press conference on Tuesday. Um, how much? How much of a precedence does AC Milan take 
on Wednesday and how much? It, it, I'll be honest, like I've said this, should I, should I share this? Yeah. For me, it feels weird. Like, coming off the last week or so and feeling so almost underwhelmed by what you've seen a team achieve, to then be going into the Champions League with an opportunity to, to achieve something which the club hasn't really done much in its history before, um, only done it once in its history, to, to make their own little bit of history by getting through into the last 16 of the, of the competition. Um, feels like weird talking about that, if you know what I mean, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, 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 get what you, I get what you mean because we've been sort of... I feel a million uh, miles away yeah, from that, the, really, the, after watching the Tottenham. We've been quite underwhelming in the last two Premier League games and then to go into a Champions League game, obviously the, the biggest competition in Europe, it does feel quite strange, but what an opportunity it is, I mean, to qualify potentially for the last 16 in the Champions League. You can imagine if we're sitting here in a week's time and they managed to do that. It would, it, it's a hell of an achievement in, it, in itself and I think in many ways if, if you do if you're able to do that kind of provide a little boost to players' mentality at the moment not question the mentality but we're talking about mental fatigueness could something could a result like that and could a last 16 players almost inspire them a, a, a little bit I think I think there's a lot riding on uh, Wednesday because you know, they've never obviously in the last time in the Champions either qualify for the second group stage but they've never qualified for the for the knockout stages of, a, of, a, of the Champions League, and um, I think they do. I think they could provide a, a, a boost behind the behind the scenes as the as the Champions League games have done. It's a different experience, isn't it? The, the Champions League games. I think the Champions League and Premier League are, are so different. Um, but it would be such a shame that Newcastle worked so hard last season to uh, to get into the top four, and for them not to. Although it's out of their hands, but they're not getting the last 16, it would, it would, it would feel a little bit disappointing. But either way, they have got an opportunity to stay in Europe um, if they if they avoid defeat on Wednesday. So I, I think there's a I think there's a lot riding on it. To be honest, I think it's a it's a very big game, um, and I, I think it does take some priority. Um, there's a conversation had down the line of if you had to pick games to win between sort of the Carabao Cup. Uh, Fulham on Saturday and then the Champions League. I mean, that, it would be a very, very difficult pick for me to, to do that on the on the spot. Um, but the proof that they've had a blip at the moment, but the proof they can't find a way to compete on all fronts. It's quite, it's quite incredible to think that you know we're, we're talking about these two results and disappointing performances, but they've actually fed, they're still in every competition this season despite all the injury problems they've had and I, I do find that they're quite incredible so yeah something to like about that yeah, yeah. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't wouldn't write them off I think being at home for the next yeah. two games is massive um, the away days as I've mentioned the away day blues there's something not clicking on the road but St James's Park is a is a different beast and I think I said it to you guys I think if you had to play Tottenham and Everton at home and the back-to-back -back games over this weekend we've just had, I think would Newcastle would have six points, um, because that home crowd carries you through, and it, it does say it, 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 it's a cliche, but it's only like a 12 man. Um, so I think after some struggles on the road, back-to-back -back home games will do uh, a lot, a lot of good for this for this team, and uh, hopefully you know and keep on in the right direction. Yeah, so in terms of part, it's definitely a big factor, and I think looking at the home and away tables the disparity is is telling Newcastle have one of the best home records I think the third best home record in the division but the 16th best or what is it fifth or sixth worst um, away record so yeah the, the disparity is is their fault to see and it's probably worth not getting carried away because before the Everton game Newcastle were the informed team in the Premier League over the 10 games prior to that so it's not necessarily the defeats, it's more the nature of the defeats, the heavy defeats and, and conceding the goals. But Newcastle have been so good at St James's Park and they will have players back. Callum Wilson and Sean Longstaff will be that bit closer. And he has said they're not quite ready to, to start or wouldn't have been at Spurs, but potentially Wednesday night could come for them. And that just that bit of rotation, that bit of freshness could, could be a big boost um, going into that game where Basically, they must get a result. They effectively need a win if they want to get through to the, or they do need a win if they want to get through to the last 16. But a result would guarantee them staying in Europe via via the Europa League after after Christmas as well. So plenty to play for, and, and 
Jordan raised a good point where you've got your next three games are in three different cup competitions in the Carabao Cup, the Premier League and, and the Champions League and it's where do your priorities lie? Are you asking me that? Oh, well, I'm just asking <laughs> just everyone. A, so, it's, it's a difficult question to answer at 20 just, past one in the morning. I know, I was, I was just, I, I'm ready for Try me. not to fall asleep. I'm ready for my bed, mate. Um, <laughs> so I would reluctantly probably take three defeats uh, on the bounce in the Premier League and I would take progress in the Carabao Cup and a draw against AC Milan. But that wouldn't make for a great run of fixtures if you draw AC Milan and then get beat off Fulham. Um, and beat Chelsea and get thrown in Liverpool in the semi-final. <laughs> Back to Merseyside. Yeah. And then play Sunderland. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Stop it, Tom. It's too late for all that. It's too late for all the hypotheticals. Jordy Juno's in the bin. Please. Right, it is. Right, I, I won't be bed. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, We're still not even home yet. No, we're still got now. As I'm sure, many, many will be. Castle fans on First world problems are actually closer at home than most. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. T's and C's time. Anybody got anything to add? You definitely don't. I don't. <laughs> I think you probably tell I'm half asleep. Right. You know what to do. Click the bell. Jory Journal's content straight to your device. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. For all this kind of stuff. But probably, well, hopefully. At better locations in the future. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.